Totes frustrating. Warriors versus Nuggets. Every Golden State player's performance from the team's 130 to 127 loss to Denver. Nikola Jokic drained a contested half-court three at the buzzer to put the bow on Denver, overcoming an 18-point Warriors lead in the fourth quarter. It was just the latest in a long line of bizarre, chaotic, and heartbreaking losses that have defined the season so far. Jonathan Kaminga Kaminga set the tone early with a drive and dunk on the game's first possession. He played competent offense and committed defense all game long. His athleticism was essential against this Denver team. He was the Warriors' second-best player on Thursday, and he sat idly by while the Warriors got outscored 36-20 in the final quarter, no further comment. Post-game bonus, best plus-minus on the team. Kevin Looney Looney was reinserted into the starting lineup given the vast, literally and figuratively, center on the other side of the court. It went pretty well initially, as Looney played good defense and brought some cool things to the offense. But it faded as the game went on, as Looney stopped contributing on offense and got worked a bit by Jokic. Chris Paul Paul played pretty decently, albeit not particularly notably. I thought his defense was quite solid in this game. Post-game bonus, tied for the team lead in assists. Steph Curry one of the sadnesses of this season is that fans are starting to associate the year more with Curry's backbreaking late-game turnovers than with his sheer brilliance the other 47 minutes of the game. Curry was excellent for so much of this contest and has been much better with ball security lately, after averaging 3.4 turnovers in his first 25 games of the year, he has just 2.0 turnovers per game over his last 7 outings. Yet the lasting image from this game, other than Jokic's shot, is Curry having the ball in his hands in the final seconds, with a chance to make or create the game-winning shot, and instead whipping an ill-advised one-handed slingshot that never had a chance towards the corner, directly into the hands of Jamal Murray. Had the Warriors hung on to win, Curry would have been the one person in the closing lineup. I wouldn't have docked for the meltdown. He would have had an excellent grade. But it's hard to get that play out of my head. He needs to do better. Post-game bonus, led the team in points and tied for the team lead in assists. Clay Thompson For much of the game, Clay was the second scoring option that Curry has desperately been looking for this year. It was an excellent scoring game for Thompson, who had primarily good shot selection, worked hard off the ball, and nabbed a few and ones as he created contact. I also thought it was a high-quality defensive game for him, which was great. He was having a great game. But I can't look past the failures of the closing lineup. Clay played all 12 minutes in the fourth quarter and had two points, with no other number in the stat sheet. Dario Saric Saric was the third center to play in this game for the Warriors, which was understandable given that he would be an awful matchup against Jokic. But he ended up being the team's best option at the position. It was a high-quality game for Saric, who contributed so much on offense, defense, and the glass. He doesn't get docked nearly as much as his teammates for his role in the fourth quarter breakdown, half because he plays a minor role and half because he assisted on the team's first four buckets. Post-game bonus, led the team in rebounds and tied for the team lead in assists. Tracy Jackson Davis Jackson Davis' performance in this game was more in the reasons to be excited about TJD, Bin, and less in the reasons the Warriors almost won the game, Bin. He flashed a lot, but he also looked like someone who hasn't played many NBA games in his career. Andrew Wiggins Wiggins is the player I struggled most to assign a grade to in this game. It's hard for me to separate his performance from the fact that I thought Kaminga should have been playing in his place in the fourth quarter. It's not Wiggins' fault that he was on the court, quite the opposite. It's also hard not to have that cloud the vision. For the second straight game, Wiggins had a solid first quarter. And I thought he played some of the best defense we've seen from him this year. It wasn't an excellent team defensive performance, but Wiggins doesn't deserve the blame. Like the other veterans, he deserves blame for what happened in the fourth quarter. He did score five points but didn't record any other stats, and his defense disappeared. Still and all, it is an encouraging performance from Wiggins. Post-game bonus, worst plus, minus on the team. Brandon Podziemski. It took me until today to realize that Podziemski reminds me of Brock Purdy. They have similar facial features, if very different styles and hair choices, the same irrational and lovable swagger and confidence, and they're both substantially better than they have any right to be. All that's missing is a shared phallic nickname. If the Warriors ever turn things around, I am confident that Podziemski will be a big reason. 
His energy, fearlessness, and selflessness are precisely what the team needs, and you can already see his influence on the veteran players. Keep doing your thing, Pods. Book your Warriors tickets at Ticketmaster to see your favorite team live. If you're a diehard Golden State Warriors fan like me, there's always something to discuss regarding this team. Be sure to visit the community page of our YouTube channel. On this channel, you will find various quizzes and polls about the Golden State Warriors to test your knowledge.